Welcome to our Two Posh Podcast. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm here with Marcella. Hello. And Bernie. Hello. And Spider. Hello. We are the hosts of today's podcast, and we are going to talk about, we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about what really happens at sea, according to cruise ship workers. Really? <laughs> it's like below deck. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, I never got into the show. I could never get into Oh, it's so good. Is it? Yeah, she likes I it. I like it. I've gone on, I think it's cool. I've gone on one cruise in my life. And Me it was, too. It was a Disney cruise, and mm-hmm. it was awesome. My son still asks about the Disney cruise. Really? D- yeah, Disney does it right. It's super expensive, but <laughs> it's all-inclusive. And like all the food, all the well, all, all the normal food, like alcohol's yeah. not included and whatnot. But it was a uh, it was a really cool experience. And when we were, uh, I met we met a couple that's still friends really? today. Yeah, but we would see other people in like thirties, forties, fifties, sixties that had no kids. <laughs> They'd be on the cruise. Oh wow! And I'd ask them like, hey, you know, hey, where are your kids at? Yeah. No, we don't have any. And apparently, it's very normal for people to come on these Disney cruises because it's just the service is ridiculous. And it was uh, it was better a cool, than a normal yeah, one. It was really cool. I used to want to be a dancer on a cruise ship, and I thought that'd be a great job. And she quickly talked me out of Why? it. Why? Oh my gosh! What a nightmare! I'm about to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm really glad I didn't do it Sorry. because yeah. <clears throat> I know that I mean, it's a nightmare. It sounds a like a great idea. It sounds really cool. Sounds Travel around so the world. Fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. I've been on one cruise. One and one only, and I will never go on another one. Was a nightmare. Uh, It was a Norwegian cruise line. It was beautiful. The ship was beautiful. It it was none of that. It was. I went back. Marcella was actually, I think, two and a half years old, and we went on this cruise ship that we had been at Disney World, and uh, my husband's mafia boss called and said, "You need to come on this ship now." And I was like, "Uh, "We're Disney." But you can't tell them no. So it's always the mafia boss and doing shit. <laughs> and then my my grandmother was with us, and I was like, I didn't even know. Poor thing, she doesn't speak English, right? So I was like, How am I going to tell her that? And I'm going, Hey, um, we're going to have to go on a cruise. <laughs> and she's this completely unplanned. We couldn't make the uh, where it actually went off left in Miami or something. So we had to chase the boat to Mexico. Wait, a li- hold on, Cozumel. So. so- you're being told you're there hanging out a little family vacation, right? I, want to set, I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, yeah right. please, yes. So you D- get, you family get, vacation with friends um, <laughs> and my grandmother that came in from Austria. So how many people are there at this vacation? Um, we're about 10. There's 10 of you guys. <laughs> but and in the middle of it, your husband's boss says, is like, you guys or the whole 10? Just our family. <laughs> Marcella, oh, me, my husband, and my grandmother. Okay. <laughs> we have to now go on a cruise. Like we're just totally aborting our Disney World vacation. So how did you find? How did you follow it in Mexico? You had to fly to Mexico. I had to fly to Mexico, Cozumel, to try to f- catch the ship because we missed Whoa. it in Miami. <laughs> and we get there, and the whole entire immigration process, all of it was insane. And the sh- we almost missed it. Like we're literally running to get on the ship and get on the ship leaves. My grandmother is having. A complete meltdown because the ship is huge. She doesn't speak English. She doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, ships are massive. Uh, They're showing us our rooms and these cabins. uh, Whoever has been on a cruise ship and I I, so small. I hated them. I was getting so claustrophobic. I couldn't even handle it. (laughs) My grandmother is not even on the same floor. Not anywhere near us. She's having a (laughs) meltdown. It was horrible. Fast forward about three hours. And we hit this massive storm, massive storm oh my gosh. where it was so freaking scary. I will never forget it. Like this, and you guys don't have any dramamine or any stuff to I like the nausea. I didn't nothing. even go. I didn't know I was going on a cruise, and I have her, and I'm I I. It was just insane. My husband got major seasick. He was just laying on a couch in the hallway of the boat. <laughs> I mean, it was just insane no so, hence she'll never go on <laughs> i will yeah. never it was so horrible but that was then beautiful like what i really still remember was the you know when you get off the boat eventually like cayman islands all that kind of stuff was cool haiti was awesome people were so nice um but then when we got home i got land sick from 
I, I don't know if you have ever heard of that or uh, had so, it. It was uh, awful. My th- God. Let me ask the question here. So why did you have to go on the ship? What was the, what was the order well, there for? When anyone in the mafia tells you to do anything, you just, just kind of do it. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's but crazy. Don't forget back then I didn't know that this was all mafia. It was like. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't <gasps> find that out. Wow. I mean, now I say it because that's now why it explains why we had to do it. Because yeah. I was like, so I didn't want to do it. I wanted to stay at Disney. But it's kind of like you're always told, well, it's for a big uh, deal. It's for a business Business. deal and you have to go for business and all that kind of stuff. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. So you just do it. And um, anyways, I got off the ship. I was land sick for about a week and a half after that. It was so miserable. So what is land sick? Land sick, you still keep feeling like you're on the boat. You're constantly, you have those waves going. You can't sleep. You cannot sleep. You you feel completely like not grounded. Your equilibrium is off. Yeah, your equilibrium is off. For a week and a half? For a week and a half. Like vertigo. (laughs) That's horrible. Oh my God. So cruise is not for me at all. (laughs) So... Um, but this is an article about cruise ship workers. And like Marcella said, I know of a lot of people that think it's so cool to work on a cruise ship. Tommy, actually, my best friend, Tommy, who was on one of our early um, shows, he worked on a cruise ship. That's where his now husband found him. Really? Actually, yeah. <laughs> so what did Tommy do on the cruise ship? Took him. What did he do on the cruise ship? He was like um, in charge of, I think, food, something like that. And. Um, he was from, he's from Austria. Yeah, he was working on the cruise ship, and this rich guy from America just took him off the cruise. Basically, <laughs> brought him to dream. America. Yeah, American <laughs> dream. How long have they been married now? They have been together for nineteen years. Wow, a long time. Wow. So, uh, but like Marcella, she always wanted to go, and I had almost had a heart attack thinking about it because I know that it's like. It's kind of a dark world when you are in that. <laughs> seems glamorous. So glamorous. It seems really side. glamorous. Because mm-hmm. yeah. like when I was th- when we were on that cruise ship, I'd ask the workers. Because, I mean, the Disney cruises. And, of course, I can only go through <laughs> Disney cruise. So everything will be related as a reference to Disney. Yeah. But they go everywhere. And so the, every worker I talked to, they loved it. And, I mean, and they said the coolest cruise that everyone wanted to get on is went to Alaska. Or the Alaska cruise was really Now, that cool. is I one that, do that I actually could maybe do because I can see land. Yeah. Like the... But you, know, was yeah. it because you got sick? Is it made it bad? See, I don't get seasick. It wasn't. It was the storm was so bad though yeah. that it was just like I don't even know if I was scared. Whatever it was, I it was miserable. I got sick. <laughs> so scary. Uh, you did. I did the first night. We uh, so the first night they uh, we had like this or the second night we got this romantic dinner. The kids were <laughs> out like our daycare thing, and the the restaurants like a it's like a four or five star restaurant. So we're at the very top, and we were hitting. The uh, waves and I didn't I didn't have any Dramamine or anything so I'm just nauseous through this whole dinner it was uh, horrible although it should have been cool it was horrible I don't get you went on one yeah it was whatever I mean <laughs> I didn't love it or didn't hate it I just where'd you go to uh, we went to Cozumel where else did I go I don't even remember now but um, it was okay I think it was maybe who I was with yeah. it was like not great but I, I'd rather be one place. I don't really like, I don't know. Like, I want to go to the Bahamas. I want to just go there. I don't like having to get, like, getting to somewhere that I think is beautiful, getting off, and then having, like, a time limit. Like, no. you got to get back to go on. Back. I have to go now. See, that was the whole thing with our, was like, I've never been on a cruise since then, but it was all, it was a family vacation, so they kept us busy the whole time. So we, went, mm-hmm. we poured out of Miami. Miami went to the Grand Caymans. From the Grand Caymans, we went to the Bahamas, the private island. So when we constantly had stuff to do, and yeah. it, again, it was it was a Disney cruise. So there's con- Disney does it right in the sense there's like I could see that there'd be though, tons of being stuff. Disney. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did Carnival. It was um, I don't know, a, no opinion really. Yeah, Just whatever. They have some really cool cruises they where they do. have like adult cruises. They, have they do. Like, I would. I think the Alaskan cruise would be so cool. Yeah. Um, there's a few that I think would be great, but um, like we have family friends whose dad goes how many cruises i think he has been on 160 cruises really yeah (laughs) it's all he does older man and he loves it he'll go by himself yeah goes by himself for weeks he goes tired yeah that's different do you know that you can live on a cruise like you can actually are you serious yes you can get an apartment what i swear to god this is some retired i believe you some retired people do that 
they actually retire on a cruise ship. They hate, people, they hate people so much. They're like, fuck all you guys. I'm going to travel the world. <laughs> I mean, I guess all. if you're going to travel the world, that's mm-hmm. the way that to do cool. it. That would be cool. If you had no, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. That, I guess that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. If you hate people, don't be around <laughs> anyone. Uh, so let's just go through a couple of these things. So they say, don't ask, don't tell. A cruise may seem like the perfect choice of vacation where you can just relax, let your kids run wild and eat to your heart's content. However, according to cruise ship workers, you should perhaps rethink your decision when contemplating set- setting off to sea. Cutting off from the rest of the world while at sea may seem refreshing, but it could cause problems for couples who start to lead separate lives. According to a what? former crew member, it's kind of like a don't ask, don't tell policy. I guess it's if you're going to work on a cruise. So what's the don't ask, don't tell part? Oh, these are the workers. Uh-huh. Oh, like... They're banging some customer? That, that, well, I think it's really crazy with uh, cruise ship workers. Really? Like their relationship. They, they are just constantly, there's, they have sex with everybody. Uh, That's what it's like. That's, it's like they're comparing it to dorm uh, rooms in okay. colleges. Well, because it's um, the workers don't get the nicest room. They no, just they, sleep at the bottom. Well, so and, some horny, is that what it is? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you are like every four days. What do they do then? <laughs> no, that's man, that's crazy. So they have a secret slang. The crew members may attend to your every want and need, providing great customer service when they can. However, while they may be there to assist you, you may not always understand what they're speaking about amongst themselves as they have their own code names for different situations. <laughs> Code Alpha translates into a medical emergency. Code Adam means a child is nowhere to be found. And Code Oscar means a person fell overboard. This is probably not to scare anyone overhearing their conversations. Dude, code, that's nuts. Code Oscar, jeez. That's pretty scary, though, too, is imagine going on a cruise with someone you hate and then they this throw happened. you over. You know that <laughs> one story? Sorry. I've heard that. I, I've oh heard it a lot. I've heard a lot of times. Yeah. They're just gone. People, people go on their honeymoon and then they throw their... Like she fell, she was drunk. Over. Terrible. You know what? I can't even imagine. Gary. Can you imagine being the person in the water? See, okay, that would be scary. I'd be scared of sharks. More than anything, I mean, the ocean, that would be scary. I mean. I hear that from most men. Like, men aren't scared of anything. Like, that's what I feel. And then most guys will say, I am, though, scared of a shark. Like. Until you get in the water, you'd be scared of sharks, too. mm -hmm. Like. No, I'm saying, like, they all are. Like, Mm -hmm. most men, like, if they're not scared of anything else in normal life, they're scared of a shark. (laughs) I'm terrified. I'm so scared. What scares you in life? Sharks? (laughs) <laughs> yeah i like not anything they're like maybe a shark a shark, a shark. Well, well. yeah uh, yeah a shark because my luck I and mean, most people a lot of people survive shark bites my luck i'd have my only good hand bit off. <laughs> oh, uh, that'd be really screwed. <laughs> i'm really in trouble that's with that terrible to think about <laughs> you have that leg that's unless you know you get all through all of it bitten off oh <laughs> you're my just, you're really god screwed. <laughs> That would That'd be, be uh, terrifying. That would be horrible. That is horrible. I mean, yeah. So, but I mean, could you survive the the fall? fall? That's mm-hmm. I mean, because that I fall. Don't know. Could you? That's a serious hype. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. When they say when you hit the water, it's like concrete. Yeah. Well, it depends on how you hit it too. Yeah. You hit it yeah. Flat. Oh, imagine falling down and just doing a belly flop well, on the side. Well, there's that one story no. where he threw her off and she landed on the. Uh, on the ship itself, oh and there's god. blood everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, that's crazy! It's right there, terrible. Oh, that's just yeah, that's bad. So no, no ships. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> not doing our next podcast on a ship, guys. <laughs> Hands off the guests. Due to pro- problems in the past, most cruise ships have issued a no fra. fra- uh, sometimes these words fra- fraternizing. Fraternizing. fraternizing with guests rule. Crew members are strictly forbidden from forming any romantic relationships with passengers on board and will face the consequence of being fired immediately if caught breaking the rule. This is I taken, bet that happens still. Oh, I do too. All the time. They'll probably yeah. sneak into the room. For sure. Uh. <laughs> That's the rule. It's like the same when we were Mavs dancers. Like, you can't hook up with players, but those girls are doing it all the time. Were they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, this is just a picture. This is what this looks like. Uh, working your bunk bed this is like bunk bed (laughs) this is how it's very non-glamorous the fewer the merrier they they may lead the luxurious life of being able to travel the world as part of their job but crew members do have to sacrifice their privacy for this reward 
Having to share cabins means that crew members are not given their own room on board, and these are not big and spacious, but rather they all have to cram, which may come as an adjustment shock. Higher-ranked officers, however, do have the privilege of being given a single room. Are most of the people who are workers, I mean, I've seen some people my age, a little older, doing it, but most of the people who are workers are, you know, college or high schoolers, right? Am I wrong on this? I mean, the, the, as they're younger, young that, adults, yeah, you know, young adults. Say. So, I mean, that's not surprising. They have horrible or uh, crappy whatever. living situation. Yeah, but I mean, I expect the captain or something like that who you know was yeah, running the ship sure. to have like luxurious thing. Right, I'm sure they do. Oh. I've heard, I've known several people that have gone on the cruise for like a dance thing. They do one, one round, and then they never go back. <laughs> it's really, like that bad? That bad? Yeah. Do they make some decent money doing it? No, they don't. They don't make a whole lot. Well, you have to. I think it. You, when you don't think about it, it's like, oh, cool, I don't have to pay for this, this, Rent, this, and this. But sure, that sounds great. But then when you're done, like, then what? Like, yeah, you have to go get an apartment and do all those things. I don't think you have the money for it. Man, I don't think it's enough. Horrible. Yeah. Well, as a really dancer, anyway, you don't make any money. <laughs> you're a starving artist. So, are there any dar- dancers that make good money? Like someone who's touring, they make pretty good money, right? They make money when they're touring, yeah. but then you are jobless after. So then you got to hustle and audition. And they usually wow. live in L.A. and it's Which so expensive, very expensive. The m- most money you'll make as a dancer is as a choreographer, really, and for uh, probably like Lady Gaga or something. But typically you're like a starving artist okay. for the most part. Yeah. That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> or a convention teacher, which is something most people don't really know what that means but they travel i was gonna say what does that mean because i don't they, know what that means. like there's dance conventions and they travel every weekend to different cities so there will be like a ballroom of kids and those teachers can make good money on their weekends yeah. but then that's it you work that weekend and then they're usually working at a studio during the week it's just really? kind of you're a starving artist yeah crazy hours is that really what crazy it is? hours wow yeah well, let's get back to the <laughs> ship thrill <laughs> fest ship. for all Spending so much time together results in the crew members often developing close relationships with another and consider their co-workers family. It's only natural that they start f- to form such close bonds and find comfort in one another. Start cheating. For some, this new life of theirs is even better than on land with one employee sharing his tale saying, I hooked up with seven different people and I am a shy, average looking dude. Another express that cruises are actually just one big thrill fest. I'm curious to see what the average looking dude, what the people who hooked up with look yeah, like. Yeah, right? Because well, because you're all stuck. There's not very much variety. Some stinky people. <laughs> <laughs> all work and little play. Spending so much time in the same <laughs> space can get slightly tedious for crew members and they need to find ways in which they can spice things up a bit. They turn to creative pranks with one admitting a favorite was while in a passenger area say to another crew member loud enough to be heard by passengers, meet you in the bowling alley tonight. With no bowling alley, we'd wait for the comment cards to come in. Why does the crew get a bowling alley when we don't? That's stupid. <laughs> That's pretty That's dumb. That's kind of dumb. <laughs> it's really dumb. You said what? They both made. <laughs> That's look- how bored they are. Oh, uh, literally, so- they're really bored. Oh my gosh. You said what? The boat may look large to the passenger excited to get on board, but with cabin walls so thin, there's no actually as much privacy as you'd hope for. From the smallest whisper. To passengers feeling like they can't let off steam in their own rooms, cruise ship members sometimes get more than they bargained for with their neighbors. We definitely hear people having sex then. Uh. (laughs) For sure. Wrong side of the sea. We may find great entertainment in watching pirates grace us with their presence on the silver screen, but they are no laughing matter when out at sea. In fact, they are very much a real phenomenon to this day, and in 2009, pirates attacked cruise ships throughout the seas. Dude, that's crazy. That would be scary. The various groups of sea villains attacked over 200 ships and stole 35 million worth of cash and goods. Wow. Cruise ships have therefore equipped themselves with enormous water cannons in case they come across the intruders. That movie with Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Captain, Captain, Captain Phillips. Phillips, that's right. Yeah. That's a true story. So I love good. when they're true stories mm, and stuff, but that's, that's crazy. Terrifying. And there are real pirates. And you hear people getting like, like, Couples will go out and they never come back because like pirates will get them oh, on their boat and that's stuff. Yeah. Terrible, scary. Work hard, party hard. So they say that they have a crew only bar and beers are a dollar fifty, and wow. guests are being offered the same drinks for fifteen dollars <gasps> a drink. That was one thing. They're uh, so expensive, expensive. Yes. drinks. Everything. Uh, <clears throat> well, I feel like anytime it's all inclusive, yeah, it's a little bit. 
suddenly you're like, why did I end up spending way more? Yeah. So our, t- I want to say our cruise is like, I mean, we ended up spending like another three or four thousand dollars just on bullshit stuff, right. pictures and of course alcohol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. So the crew members have the craziest parties while on board, but. Can you really blame them? Sometimes a few drinks can go on a long way because they have nothing else to do. So basically they get drunk and have sex. That's it. (laughs) In their free time. Uh (laughs) Uh, The food, they're saying the food is terrible. Chicken nuggets. Ew. They they call them chicken nut cuts. Ew. (laughs) Oh my gosh. They say it's really, really bad. Um, He said the two most common ethnicities on my ship were from Philippines and India. So the crew cafeteria was usually full of food I wasn't used to, like pigtail stew and fish heads. God. (laughs) That alone would make me want to go home. It's horrible. I'd be eating Skittles. I will say the food, I didn't, wasn't, except for the nice restaurant we were at, the food was not spectacular. No. No, They say that. They say it's not even that good. No. Land of the lazy. If you're someone who appreciates a good weekend after a long week at work, then considering becoming a cruise worker will not be your thing. Working on a cruise ship usually means an average work week will be working 80 hours. Wow. Double the amount that most Americans are used to. I'm curious what they get kind of money. Paid? Yeah. These long hours become so intolerable for workers that many do not even complete their committed nine-month contract. They begin to discover that the work becomes too physically and mentally challenging to continue. Like they can literally not enjoy anything. Like they can't. They, that's what I hear all the time. That's, it is miserable. Horrible. Like yeah. you go into these ports, so it's beautiful, and most of the time you can't even get off because you have to work. Oh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, because it sounds like you get to go to port and you get to go off and party because yeah. everybody's off. But mm-hmm. I don't think that's how that Isn't works. Isn't that how it is on that show? How do they do it? No, it looks. They look miserable on that show do they? too. On right. below deck, they're fighting. Oh my gosh, they have the same thing. Those close tiny, quarters. Tiny, tiny close quarters. Mm-hmm. The workload looks insane. And then imagine on that show, though, the guests. I mean, to even go on one of those yachts is like 200000 something. Damn. And so the guests are so just mm. brats. And wow. they're so kind of rude. I mean, not all of them, but A lot imagine of them. having to wait on those people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hand and foot. Like, excuse me. Like, hello, ma'am. Jeez. I need my drink. I'd no. be like, fuck off. I'll push you overboard. <laughs> and Marcella's leaving right yeah. now. So Marcella got a, fired. She got fired two days into the trip. That's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> she got fired. Like, the, the pay people came on board. <laughs> so this, like, uh, this job website says uh, most employment opportunities on a cruise ship earn twelve to 1500 a month. Why would somebody do that, though? I guess it'd have to be someone who just was like, ah, I want to see the world or something, right? Because uh-huh. that is not a lot. That's... No, that's poverty. The yeah, young kid. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it, that, w- that would be cool if you were like in college and you didn't have to work and you weren't depending on the money and you're, you know, maybe that would be kind of cool. But how could you do that for nine months? That's it, but is it set for nine months? Or could, I'm sure they yeah, have Yeah, you have little... to sign a contract. I think it's six or nine months. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not like they could do it a summer. You know what I mean? Like, I could see that as a college kid. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a friend of mine. Now that I'm thinking about it, we were at, went to high school together and he, uh, he was a super straight laced kid. We went to a strong like Christian private school, and so most of the kids when they left, they ended up doing dumb shit like I did when I left. Yeah, and he ended up getting working on a cruise ship, playing guitar or some of that, and then he ended up moving to Alaska. But he would like just do cruise ships around the world. Really? And then, yeah, and then he ended up moving to Alaska. I don't know what he's doing now, but wow. for years he did this. You're not friends with him on Facebook? No, we're Should not. Find. We're not. <laughs> I should. See, huh? I'm just gonna find him. You hook me up with the cruise, <laughs> <laughs> or tell me everything that happens on the cruise. You need some help. Mm. How about if the viruses? On That's the why ship? Isn't one of the biggest reasons I won't go. Because the viruses, mm-hmm. I am terrified to get like all of a sudden everyone gets like a neurovirus oh, and everybody man. gets infected. I'll I'd die. Be more scared of planes for that reason. Really? But you're not on the plane for that long. Yeah, once you're stuck. If you're yeah, out in sea, you're stuck. Yeah, yeah like these are like a, like five days. Like at least in the... <laughs> this guy looks really happy. <laughs> oh my God, that makes yeah. me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you hear that people like a whole ship get sick suddenly or food poisoning from I don't know what. Like on a plane at least it's what, like four to five hours I can get off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not days. That would be horrible or you see those ships that are at, that at sea that have this they end up flipping on the sides or like you see videos of everyone going everyone, across yeah, the there's whole a storm time. yeah they slide across oh my god i'm no. never going on a cruise again uh-uh. they say this is kind of crazy you guys uh 
In the worst case scenario, should something happen to a child while on board the ship, the parents are held completely liable. The 1920 Death on the High Seas Act states that only rehabilitation for spouses is issued, but the same is not provided for children. Wow. I know. Wow. <laughs> Regardless of the reason, <laughs> even horrible. if they have been harmed due to negligence by something on board, it's best to keep an eye on your kids. That's horrible. <laughs> You are going to pay. Um, employees may get to stay on the cruise ship for free and are also provided with fundamental necessities, but life on board is not all luxury. While they're given a helping hand to make their daily lives manageable, they're charged for basics such as drinking water, toilet paper, wow. and extended internet access. Then you have to pay for toilet paper. It's like in Mexico. In Mexico, certain places, they'll make you pay for toilet paper. Like the little, well, I say that. When I was younger, we went to uh, Tijuana, and when you everyone, pay for toilet paper? yeah, it was like a dime. To, what were you talking about? You had to pay to go to the bathroom. Yeah, where's the in place Australia? in Europe? You were, yeah. Oh yeah, you had the yeah. little holes in the ground, right? <laughs> no, oh, that, that was so totally different. Is that <laughs> oh yeah, that, I don't remember what we were talking about. Because yeah, any one of those situations are not yeah. horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so they just say Wi-Fi was five dollars a day for twenty-four access to limited, limited social media apps. Or ten dollars for a hundred minutes unrestricted. They spent way too much money on the shitty Wi Fi. Any work? Like that's the working people? Yeah, that's the people that's that are crazy. working. Oh my god, I'd be like, I need to go home. Why would someone <laughs> I don't understand why someone would do that still? I don't know. There is real life characters. Going green at sea, presentation is vital while on board a cruise ship. Cleanly it's important to keep things impressive for pa- passengers. Uh, having fantastically carved fruit placed on the buffet is sure to do just that. However, let it be known that the fruit used for show is also the same fruit given at meal times, even after days have gone by. <gasps> oh, that sounds horrible. This is because the food is recycled throughout the time the boat is out at sea due to the lack of access to fresh food. Wow. That's nasty. Oh, we just decided we're God. never, never going on a cruise ship in this <laughs> like podcast. That Disney cruise, I just love. It's not good anymore. <laughs> wow. Smooth sailing. Even the best of chefs that are employed on board are told to add a little secret ingredient to all their food. Their talents are not being tested. Rather, they've been told to add this to their delicacies as a way to help speed up digestion. What? Wait, whoa, it whoa, whoa, whoa. is usually yeah. extra fat that is being added and it works wonders as a laxative. What? You may not want to be made aware of this before tucking into one of your meals, but it is intended to assist in the ship's plumbing. Wait, so they want you to take a shit? Is that what they want to do? <laughs> yeah, they want to slick you up so it goes through the pipes faster. Is that what <laughs> so that you like, what? it's like not solid? Yeah. That's crazy. That's what? disgusting. That's and disgusting. that's like someone poisoning you. <sighs> I know. Where did you get all this information? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The food stuff freaks me out because you never know what's happening. Cruise is a horrible idea. <laughs> horrible no one idea. is ever going to go on a cruise it's again. It's ruined this for me forever. <laughs> these, Thank you. These cruises are going to sue Too Much Podcast. <laughs> so you can in court again. God, that's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Scavenging animals. They may look, but they can't touch when it comes to employees eating the high end culinary treats made for the guests. Although they are allowed to take whatever is left over, cabin crew members are not offered the same variety. While some members are grateful for the offering and take the food for the go to cabins, others argue that they're being treated treated as stray animals <laughs> who are given the scraps or pieces ready for the garbage. That's horrible. Probably should have gone on the cruise instead of working on it then. No kidding. No kidding, yeah. True. This is not super expensive anymore either. No. Scary statistic. Ships make sure that they are prepared for anything while out at sea. And while this may not be the best thing to be made aware of, there is a morgue found on every cruise ship. <gasps> Holy shit. What? In fact, around 200 guests die aboard cruise ships every year, which is mainly old folks who have simply reached their time. The good news is that this does not mean that going on a ship is dangerous, nor does boarding one mean risking your life. It is just unfortunate timing. So for they, a morgue to be put on oh ship, that's my like, God. that's bad. 200 die a year? Yeah. Is that's that a lot right? of old people taking cruises. It so. is a lot of old people taking cruises. I know, but still, my God. How many cruises do you think they, I mean, annual, it's a, I don't know, we could probably look it I up. I guess if you live on it, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Retired on there, retirement person. And then you die on there, and then you're in the morgue in there. Man. Do they call, like, their family and be like, 
Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> You're Shipping confused. Out to sea. Fatty food frenzy. A secret was revealed by Holland America spokesperson John Primo, and the admission on CNN was relatively sickening. According to Primo, a typical cruise meal will make the average passenger gain a pound a day due to the Ooh. high amount of calories in the food. A Ad- pound a day? Additionally, towards the end of the voyage, there's a limit on fresh food, with much of the food from earlier in the week having to be recycled instead. Dude, that's just... Ugh. explaining how the buffet always seems stuck up stocked up oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you have awesome. been warned you are to enjoy the cruise amenities of at your leisure as well as enjoy the great outdoors when the ship docks for the day meanwhile the cruise does provide an itinerary given passengers and plane to follow that is unless you do not wish to make it back to the ship before it moves on to the next destination it's usually around five o'clock in the afternoon what does happen if you miss it? I was wondering the same thing. I remember uh, when, when we were going to have to pay. <laughs> they they to were get pretty out good. Like when we, I mean, they were really, really, because we ported like Grand Caymans and the Bahamas and they were really good about staying a lot longer to get people. It says a the shot. ship gets a uh, fine issued if it stays over the time slot. Uh, but did they do like a head count? Like how do you know everyone is back? That's a good question. You know, like on a plane, they they're like, okay, so and so, like, get I'm to sure your they gate. do that. I'm sure they have. I don't remember how they did it. I don't either. I'm sure they do have that. Oh, here we go. These uh, stats are a few years old, but it looks like in 2014 15, there was 23 and a half million passengers and four and a half million crew that went on cruises. So we're talking about 28 million people and only 200 died. That's pretty good odds. Oh, wow. <laughs> The more that puts it in pers- unless that you're puts one of the 200. In- <laughs> oh, yeah. But that puts it in perspective, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's not often. Yeah. yeah, that's the same thing. Like uh, if you're driving on the highways around here and you see the uh, the tech stop board where it gives you the number of deaths for the year. Oh, yeah. I'm like, God, that seems really high. And then there's like, you know, 20 billion people <laughs> driving around. And you're like, well, I guess my odds are good of not getting into it, right? <laughs> um, Your odds are pretty okay. Uh, you are who you're with. Just because they may be out at sea does not mean that the same societal issues found on land do not still exist. It has been found that crew members who share the same ethnicity tend to confide in one another, often secluding anyone who is considered different to them. That's stupid. <laughs> Straight <laughs> by land. In the, uh, <laughs> what was that one? I don't know. Some of this is like getting boring. Ranks are real. A former member of the crew shared that there's almost a what is a cast system? Cast yeah, system. That's like a, a old feudal thing, like lords, ladies, that, that kind of thing. Uh, which means I guess that like there's that. a ranking for employees with offices at the top, entertainment following behind, then front of a house, and lastly, back of house. There's definitely a cruise ship hierarchy. There's a hierarchy in the studio, too. <laughs> Here? Here? Yeah. Whoa, what is I'm just that? hoping Michael listens to this and then gets pissed off later. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Michael? Who's at the top? Spider. Well, him since he owns the place. And <laughs> I'm the only other employee, so that makes me ra- uh, rank two. <laughs> I fall last. I fall last. <laughs> Salaries are also dependent on your birthplace. An Indonesian cruise employee is said to make 600 a month for working 12 to 14 a hours month. a That's day, crazy. whereas a U.S. worker could make 3,000 a month working 6 to 10 hours. That's nothing. So, but if you, let's say, you said an Indonesian, but mm-hmm. I mean, that's still the 3,000 is nothing for sure. Mm-hmm. But I mean, uh, I can imagine where they're coming from, like their environment. But I mean, maybe that's a lot of money. It's probably not. Yeah, it could be. But I mean... Depends if being, I guess I don't know anything much about Indonesia, but <laughs> but still American three thousand a month. That's that's a lo- I guess if you're college kid, college kid, that's a decent mm-hmm. amount of money. If you're yeah. a college kid who maybe you're taking a semester off, yeah, six true. Months out, and your parents are like you don't have to work or something. And I guess you can save money. So if nine months, so mm-hmm. uh. you can try to save it as much as you can, as long as you don't want water or toilet paper or internet <laughs> or internet. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, who needs internet though when you're just having sex all the time? That's right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Unless you're sick from all the food poisoning, yeah. <laughs> all the fatty food. That's, right, all the fatty food. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other dimension a, to the crew uh, having sex. Oh my god, that, mm. that sounds awesome. <laughs> so management doesn't trust their employees at all. 
so the they aren't allowed to take elevator rides with guests if you're the only two people in it. For the same reason, you're not allowed to fraternize with guests. Also, if you're taking a photo with a guest, both of your hands must be visible. <laughs> that would be awesome. I just take pictures of doing jazz hands. <laughs> Dude, that's so crazy. <clears throat> They're also probably trying to protect the crews. I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a liability it's almost, thing. Yeah, absolutely. I know Disney World has a bunch of crazy policies like that. Oh my gosh, like theirs are You can't insane. point with a finger, you have to like point with a hand because yes. it's offensive in some cultures, <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. No I'm kidding. I knew a, a dancers from Disney and the rules of Disney are insane. Oh, the craziest one was that uh, you can either have a beard or not. You can't be working there while you're growing a beard. <laughs> really? So yeah, you, either you come there with a beard and you're ready to work or... Or you don't have one. There's we no should do a Disney one like this because those rules are insane. That would be cool. Yeah. They are actually categorizing you when you get on the ship. You're either newlyweds, overfeds, or soon to be dead. <laughs> so the really? <laughs> you're newlyweds, fat, or you're going to die. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's more than just that. Do not think you get to move groups either since once you have been placed into one of the three stereotypes, you're there for the duration of your stay. I could give a shit less what they yeah, think I about me. I either. can't either. Because I'm in the awesome group. Uh, yeah. I'm in the, the secret <laughs> group. group. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I am my group. Mm. <laughs> there are 5 to 15 washers and dryers and anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000. 2, 1,500 crew members. Wow. Oh, my God. So they they would be in clean, nice-smelling uniforms every day, but they're not. <laughs> I always wonder about the towels, too. Oh, like, I know. I wonder that in hotels, though, a lot. Yeah. Like the towel situation. I hate that. <laughs> I hate all of it. <laughs> like, Eat, tea, sleep, repeat. The added entertainment on a cruise ship for the enjoyment of passengers, but do not think that you have been honored with something unique and different from the passengers before you. In fact, coming up with new material is not in the job description for entertainers, and if you wish to go on the same cruise again, do not expect anything new. We don't want you to know that all those funny jokes we tell you at Bingo, yeah, same ones are said every single cruise. That's not surprising, though. No, not at all. Yeah, not at all. I mean, but, maybe every year change it, but like, <laughs> like yeah. the dancers. I mean, yeah. I would think you'd want a new show, but Big Brother is watching you at all times on the cameras. It's safe to assume yeah. if you're outside of your cabin, you're on camera. That's, that's normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's safe to assume anywhere. I feel like I'm on. You're on camera everywhere yeah. now, especially. I like walking through Deep Ellum waving. I know I'm getting captured constantly. I'm like, oh, it's like oh, I always waving at cameras. <laughs> <laughs> While ordering a bottle of wine is cheaper than a glass at a time, you can also ask the cruise ship waiters to mark your bottle with your room number and store it at the bar. That way, if you do not finish... so boring. Who cares? <laughs> Spoiled and pampered for free. <laughs> they have no idea. Being out at sea means being cut off from the rest of the world and engaging in a conversation with a worker about current affairs is likely to not go anywhere. You stop Stupid. following news, sports, and pop culture. This sounds like a horrible, horrible uh, career choice. Right? Like, this sounds nothing exciting about it at all. Okay. You're working 80 hour weeks for $3,000. Mm-hmm. So, what does that come out to? Well, hello there. Just oh, as yeah, what are you fog. An hour? Go ahead. You look it up. Just as care. fog can be an increasing danger when a ship is out at sea, whales can be just as bad. Since it is nearly impossible to navigate through without being able to see ahead and what can potentially be hit, whales are a concern when out at sea. However, because the impact of hitting a whale is not felt on the ship, passengers are none the wiser if and when this would happen. A good thing, too, because the less pan- passengers know about potential dangers, the happier they are. Working 80 hours a week at $3,000 a month, you're uh-huh. making $4.16 <gasps> a month, an hour. Stop it. Yeah. $4 oh an God. hour? Yeah. <laughs> That's like less than like minimum wage. It's on a 30-day. It's less thing. than minimum wage 20 years ago. Yeah, right. right? Dang, they're taking way advantage. What's the minimum wage now? Ten. Uh, yeah, right now they they raised it to ten something. Ten, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Couldn't tell you. Luckily, I haven't made that little in a while. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you, God. <sighs> um, there's a natural remedy. This is a good thing for everyone to know for for motion sickness. 
The natural remedy is green <laughs> apples and bland crackers. Stay off the cruise. That's your natural <laughs> remedy. <laughs> but green apples and bland crackers. Who would have ever known? I I've didn't know that. that. That's that very, very interesting. The crackers I knew about. That was you, something my mom always did was drink like a Sprite and eat. Crackers. Yeah, like stale crackers. But the crackers. green apple, I think that's really interesting. I think, I think I'm looking forward to calling Miss Polly. <laughs> if it works. <laughs> Hi, Miss Polly. Hello. Hi. Hi. Today we're just trying to get you to send us nudes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I gotta play the song. No, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is penis and pussy talk with Miss Polly. So, Miss Polly. <laughs> We are having yeah. a very interesting question for you that we want to know, and Bernie is going to be very probably with you on this, but we want to know how often <laughs> how often do men need to have sex? Need or want? Both. Uh, well, I'm curious who you say. Explain both, because I think yeah. that people are really not informed about this. Um... Probably more often than women, number one, mm -hmm. because, well, especially younger men have a higher sex drive. <clears throat> so, because women don't typically hit their hardcore sex drive until in their 30s. Um, so, it's a little lopsided, <laughs> but... Um, on average, three to four times a week. Huh. Now, that's time as far as days. That doesn't necessarily mean times as far as in a that's day. That's fair. <laughs> okay. Is so that compatible with what you were thinking that or is what compatible. you mean? <laughs> yes. That <laughs> is that is what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> he agrees times, yeah. with you. I agree. <laughs> I agree completely. Because I mean, I might, yeah. this once a month deal or once a week deal, or that's crazy to me. Spider, that, that doesn't make any sense. What What do you want? What do you want from me? <laughs> I need to know. Well, we need I, to know. How How often do you need sex? Uh, never. I don't need it. Ever. Inquiring minds want to know. Want it all the time, but I don't need it ever. All I, the time. I can go without. Yeah. Well, a lot of people <laughs> I don't can want go to. without. I don't want to, but I can. It sounds horrible. Guys. Now, just, I guess the question is also, is this including self-gratification or no. is this... No, no, no. Okay. not at all. With a partner. Yeah, with a partner. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. So, if you put it together, what does that look like? What do you mean, what does it look like? How often? Well... How often? If you put, if you added self gratification into the picture, oh, it depends because if it's so for me, if it's like a regular thing, like if if I'm having sex three or four times a week, I'm I'm pretty happy. Yeah, and at that point, if right. it's multiple times throughout, so if that three or four times a week is more like eight, nine, ten times in a week, and I know that's being dramatic, but I'm just if it's multiple times, I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah. And I don't at that point I don't need to take care of myself. So you don't need to no. do anything. Not to say else. I wouldn't and I don't, but I'm, <laughs> I'm typically I'm, yeah, typically I'm pretty good at that point. Yeah. But, you know, that makes yeah. Makes sense. I think that's fair. That's that's I mean that's what I've heard from Let me ask this though. This so that. let me ask this question. So because I didn't think about this when we were talking earlier about women who can go a month or so without sex or a year or whatever does that also include them masturbating themselves or is that i mean do they do that all or is this there's a total loss of like desire for um, sex and stuff like that it depends on their mental state it, it is it depends on their mental state it depends on what medication they're taking sometimes yeah. um because women's cycles seem to be like and hormone levels, there's so many factors involved in that, <clears throat> that, you know, <sighs> we are such complicated creatures. I used to have a girlfriend who said that she felt like she was asexual. Like she felt like she was yes. concerned about herself because she was like, I have no sex drive like at all. And I'm not attracted to women. I'm not attracted to men. I'm not attracted. Like I have. How nothing. long did that last for? 
Well, I was, I don't, we're not, we don't talk much anymore, but at the time I was like, what does that even mean? I mean, I was a lot younger, but she felt, she was like, I just don't know what's wrong with me. Like no sex drive whatsoever. We'll say there was one time in my life where I had no sex drive at all, no desire for it. And it was on, it was medication I was taking. Uh-huh. And I mean, it, t- it, it took the, it was the, weir- I remember thinking it was like the, the molecule or the nerves or the emotions that caused like enjoyable for sex gone for, it was for like a good couple of mm-hmm. months. Did it, it freak you out? Yeah. Well, the, yeah, it did. I mean, it was so concerning. And then when it, then the, the the problem was is when I was intimate, I couldn't orgasm. Like it yeah. was horrible. Like it made. I mean, I think that's what made it. Where I was like, oh, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. I'm but done. then, I, yeah, then done I got, trying. yeah, then it was switching medication <laughs> up. This was just like right after my accident. Yeah. And mm. uh, and it was just. I remember, but I remember feeling like that vivid thought of like, dude, this is not normal. Is that right? Yeah. This is not good at all. But mm-hmm. yeah. So all Been right. Been there, done that. Yeah. One time in my life. It's true. <laughs> but it's typically, I would say typically those that feel like they're asexual, which is they don't want any sex at all, mm-hmm. don't feel attracted to either sex or sex in general. Um, I feel like at some point there's probably some type of hormonal issue. Uh, okay. Because. Mm-hmm. To have absolutely no sex drive is just not normal really? for the human species. Wow, I just that's don't think of it. Is. Mm-hmm. That's very I mean, there's got to be either some or, or I mean, because not everybody's attracted to everybody. But at the same time, you should be attracted to something. something. <laughs> I mean, I re- you know, um, yeah, you're, yeah. I remember when I, yeah. uh, when you were talking, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just thinking of what you were saying. I remember when I uh, worked for a medical company and I worked on call 25, eight, like I worked all the time. My stress level was super high. Um, I worked in mm-hmm. you know, a hundred hour weeks legitimately. <clears throat> and I remember yeah. my, um, like, and I still try to work out and all that stuff and everything fell off. My, my sex drive was off my balance for it. And I ended up getting blood work done. It turned out my testosterone was low. So my I had a mm-hmm. hormone imbalance. I ended up getting on testosterone the replacement therapy. But I remember my, I mean, that was exactly what it was. It yeah. was like, I was, I mean, and I was yeah. just off. It was fucking horrible. I think everything stress, was off. Stress I, I is understand. Bad. Stress is a killer of everything. And killer directions. It, <laughs> it, it, like, seriously, stress can, I mean, and overworking. <clears throat> and I can remember being so caught up in work and I mean, I at one point had three jobs, you know, and I was just, I was exhausted. Yeah. I had no desire for anything because I was so freaking tired, tired, mm-hmm. tired just exhausted. And of course, you know, there was also that lack of hormone balance, you know, mine were all kinds of jacked up too. So I get like when you have zero testosterone, <clears throat> it's amazing that you can even make it through the day. Mm-hmm. People will just look at you and go, I, I, I don't even know how that happens. That was pretty and bad. It's like, you know, it, it, pretty bad. I get it. I understand. <laughs> you know what's crazy so is a that, lot of guys are get, and I, I'll speak from only guys' perspective, <clears throat> but guys tend to get, it's more acceptable men are now doing this testosterone replacement therapies, but man, it used to be so like a four letter word like nobody really talked about it, it was almost mm-hmm. embarrassing now i mean more people are doing it yeah now, yeah i don't think it's yeah everyone talks about it i know now. it's like normal yeah, which is sure. good yeah uh, well, like we seriously sell supplements testosterone supplements oh um, do you really where i work uh-huh oh, we wow. sure do oh, wow yep well on that note we all can on agree that, that men need a lot of sex so <laughs> yes. <laughs> nothing yes, new. Yes. it makes them happy <laughs> well guys tell your new. girls love. that you love her and then you'll get more sex mm-hmm. also i was watching real housewives of new york one time and this husband <sighs> gave his wife this like diamond whatever she's like i'm gonna give him two blowjobs now so if you want some more uh, oh stuff <laughs> just give like give a gift a whole, and you might a get a good blowjob a whole two blowjobs i think she two. meant like an like extra on top of what she's doing because she got a good life so like if you want more blowjobs, give another gift. There you go. Right. <laughs> Make sure I stock up. Hint, hint. Diamonds will hint, get you a blowjob. Hint, hint. hint. <laughs> I mean, diamonds. You might get more than a blowjob. Hey, right? I, I'm a diamond. <laughs> I'm a diamond girl. Uh, what to say? <laughs> and there is a problem. <laughs> Bernie diamond. I need a blowjob. <laughs> um, let's go to the question of the day. 
Very the friendly. two posh girls ask the question of the day. Today's question of the day is: What is the weirdest food you have ever tasted? I'll go first, guys. I know I, this just happened okay. to me. I was in LA uh, last week, and I met people from Iceland, and they were part of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, which I have supported for years because my one of my really close friends' daughter has cystic fibrosis, and they were there for a conference, and they were going to raise two million dollars wow. for um, this charity event for cystic fibrosis. And they were telling me that we will see a cure for cystic fibrosis in our lifetime, which is insane. Nice. Yeah. With that came that in Iceland, there is a tradition and they actually hang shark and they make it ferment by the ocean air. It hangs for months and months and months. If you eat it when it's fresh, it's actually poisonous to your body. Shark? Shark, shark meat. So they said that it's tradition. So we had, to, I mean, I had to do it. They said you have to do it for your cystic fibrosis girl. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So we were about four people and they take out this little tiny bag, unrolls it. It's the worst smell ever. I wanted to I die. Can't imagine. And then he had, like, gave you this little piece and then they gave you a shot of a certain vodka. And I don't drink hard liquor usually, but they said you had to take it, chew it. And then there was taste it, taste it, and there was supposed to be this ammonia something <laughs> taste. You throw it I have back no up. idea. <laughs> and then you're supposed to drink that shot. And I'm like, I don't I really do you shots. Did that? They made me do it for Allison. How could I not do it? That's so horrible. Well, did you tell Allison you did that? <laughs> I told Helene. So I put that in my mouth and I started chewing it. I thought it was going to faint. Oh, like you guys, horrible. it is the worst taste I've ever. So I've it was never, shark meat. Shark fermented, fermented. Like raw, and then like, Patrick told me that uh, the food uh, guy, the, the 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 guy that does all the crazy food, what is his name? Um, pick one. They're all. Crazy I know the, the <laughs> one. The, uh, the I can't think of his Andrew name. Andrew something. Andrew something. Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yes. Zimmerman. That's right. He Zimmerman. did it, yes. and it actually on his list. I think it is the two worst food he's ever had. He has done oh. it, and you can actually watch the show. I did that, guys, and then I actually tried that vodka. I've never tasted anything better in my life. After that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that sounds so horrible. Oh, it was so, great. What was the, so, what was the whole benefit supposed to be of it? It's tradition. Yeah. Or just tradition? No, it's like from it. Iceland, different oh. country. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm trying to think of what I've ever. I've never had anything crazy. Weird. I I, yeah, I think I had. I mean. Honestly, I think the crazy thing I had were like crickets or something in Mexico. Yeah. Or that's Mexico. pretty crazy. I've never done that. Yeah, yeah those all but, the time. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, it's a lot Crawfish. of people do it. It's pretty Crawfish. normal. That's definitely pretty normal. But oh, yeah, I, don't I mean, know. have you ever had blood sausage? I have not. That's the weirdest oh, thing yeah. I've had. Not blood sausage, but actual <laughs> like a little cube of congealed pig's oh, blood. Gross. It was disgusting. <laughs> I, I guess for I me, get it, down. it would be fried butter from the fair. That was disgusting. Oh, that sounds funny. Nasty. nasty. That sounds Miss Polly. That's all I can say. Yes. Arteries clogged. What about you? Um well actually it was actually mine was recent. Um the place where I get my nails done. Um cat. Cat, right? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Immediately, oh yes, God, you think that's it's cat. Really funny. <laughs> 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 no, the owner um had, I guess he's vegetarian and he had this thing wrapped in like um, oh, leaves. What and was the thing? It was Get. this gelat. <laughs> it was this. No, he's a vegetarian. Come on. I'm trying <laughs> to say. He's a vegetarian. <laughs> so it was this gelatinous. It looked like a tamale. Okay. Um. Looked like a tamale, but it was just. Ugh. Wrapped in okay, grape leaves. Okay, so he's like wrapped in grape leaves and like handed to me. He's it's good, it's good. We eat this all the time. And I'm like, okay. And he's like telling me it's like they, it's like some kind of like um, vegetables and that they marinate. And I, and it was honestly, gross. It tasted like vomit. 
Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. And I'm trying to, and, and for me, it was a texture thing because it was like eating like really hard jello. Mm. And it just wouldn't, it wouldn't like break apart. It was just there and it was like this gelatinous thing in my mouth and I wanted, <laughs> didn't want to be rude. Have you ever had pig's feet? I swallowed it. I have never had pig's yes. feet. Yes. Do you like pig's feet? I've had. I love mm -hmm. them. They're really? so good. The you, other thing that oh, she loves. You and my, my mother loves blood sausage so much. I love it's blood like, sausage. Ooh, have you ever had tongue? I know. No. Have you ever had tongue? Yes. Tongue is I've the best. I've actually cooked really? tongue before. I uh, have the, actually cooked tongue before. The same place I get crickets, I get uh, La lingua. lamb's tongue. Oh, lamb's tongue. tongue. I've never yeah. had lamb's I tongue. I haven't either. I like it better than cow tongue. You guys are all weird. Well, all right. all y'all are weird. <laughs> hey, no, anything for me, any meat that comes from an animal's head is going to be delicious. Oh, well, well, then you hey. should have been around when my dad made goat heads or no, what was it? Lamb's lamb heads. heads. I said <laughs> lamb heads, and they are passing around the eyeball and they are sucking on the teeth. That's horrible. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's no. just. I actually horrible. think I have I'm pictures you, of it. No, we have video. I of had. It. I had a roommate from uh, Thailand, and I ate stuff that I didn't even know what it was. Uh oh, that's scary. <laughs> but the other thing that you have always in the refrigerator is when we open it is that fish thing. The hair. Sardines. No, no that sardine. it's like in a big oh, herring. The herring. What is it? Pickled Pickle. herring. She eats pickled herring. What is that? A lot of people do. It looks like it's a cool. snake herring. in this like jar. It's so good. What is it? It's, it's a fish. It's a fish, and it's pickled, pickled. and you eat it cold and. It's just so horrible. good. God, that's all so horrible. When we open the fridge and I see that, I'm like, wow, she loves it. It's, and it's then, a big jar and, and it then, looks like a snake. How about calf's liver? Has anyone had that? No. Raw. Raw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, what? She's not raw. Austrian. raw. Is that what it is? But that's like. Have you had like, calf fries? Oh what? Gosh. Have you had calf fries? <laughs> what is it? Calf fries? <laughs> no. Calf fries. No. Rocky Mountain oysters. Yeah, same Rocky thing. Mountain. Oh, oh that, no, I have not. I've had oysters. Testicles. I have not they're, had that, but hey, have you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna balls. do a show and bring it like, all we're not of it. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm bringing all of it, and we're gonna have it all. We are doing it. I am writing it down right now, Bernie. Let's make that like it. the last show that we do in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Here, have this nut. This is good. These balls are good. <laughs> oh, hey, no, you do. slice them really thin, and then you chicken <sighs> fry them like. Are they that good? Are they fried. good though? They're, they're delicious. I bet they're good. They're done with cream fried. gravy and they're delicious. <laughs> oh. Let's do it. Oh, I'm going to totally do that. Right. Starving. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie. Bernie. Right Bernie. on that balls <laughs> face. Yeah. Bernie is going to go, I can't, really, I can't make it I can't that make day. That <laughs> I think if it was cooked, I could probably do some, but raw, like. We're going to do it on the same day as the dating show, so you have to show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. <laughs> We're so oh, sweet, We'll have man. to do it at the end of August sometime, yeah, so you that's had, when I'm going to be in Dallas. We will awesome. plan it. We'll do it. All right, Miss Polly, thank you so much, and we will call you again. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you.